Hey guys and welcome back to Real Guys Reviews with Lakota Thurall. Guys, it has been a week. As you guys know, I'm active duty military, but not for much longer. I've got a week and two days left. So, with that being said, there are so much things to do to get out of the army. I don't know if you know this. You might be in the army. You might not. But there are so many things to do. And as soon as you think you got them done, you don't. They'll throw more at you. And then they're like, oh, if you don't get this done, you're not getting out of the army. Uh, nah, 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 nah. And it's, it's a pain. It is a pain. But... Without further ado, today, this day, this one right here, the one that we're all in, this one, we're going to be reviewing what is quickly becoming my favorite locomotive, the Hornby D49-1 Cheshire. And you might be thinking, didn't you review that earlier? Why no? No, I didn't. I showed you how to change the oil for the smoke generator on it. Yes, that's right. I set a smoke generator on a Hornby locomotive. Yeah. Part of the reason why it's the fave. Part of the reason. Majority of the reason. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's the whole reason why, I, why it's my favorite now. Um, I have been looking into some other ones. Um, Broadway Limited does some really good trains that have smoke generators in them. I better get the salt. That's a supernatural reference for you guys. Um, anyway, Broadway Limited does a couple, and Hornby did their live steam, but live steam are so expensive. They're like a thousand dollars for a cheap one. So we, you all know, I ain't got that kind of money. Y'all know that. I, I ain't got that kind of money. Ain't nobody got that kind of money. And being in the army, ain't nobody got that. Anyway. Without further ado, let's bring the D49-1 around and we'll get to looking at it. Now it does have a ring-filled motor, so it doesn't do very well on points. If you guys heard that, it did cut out there for just a second. It's a fairly decent sized locomotive. I'll bring it in as much into the shop as possible. A little more, a little more. Ah, uh, there you go, okay. All right, guys. I chose this side to do most of the review on because it, I think it's got the most detail on it. Um, you can see it's got a big reverse rod there. What I think is a reverse rod. I'm 95% sure that's a reverse rod. If it isn't, and you know, let me know in the comment section below. You know I like to learn. Um, it's an older one. It's about, from what I can tell all the research I've done on it, it's about... 20 to 25 ish years old um so yeah it's a little dated but compared to some of the other ones it's not that bad it's really not at the time when it was made it was a pretty high-end one um so yeah now this locomotive was designed and built to be a mixed traffic engine as far as i know um so it would haul anything from coal to I don't know, VIPs and Pullman coaches. Speaking of Pullman coaches, if you go get one of these, remember, it is tender driven. That means the engine's back here, y'all. That ring fill motor sits right in there, okay? It does not have the best pulling power. And because you have to put actual oil for it to burn steam or to make steam in it, that oil gets on the wheels and it don't want to pull nothing. So if you go ahead and get one of these, and you don't have any coaches or any wagons with metal wheels on them, you may want to invest in those too. Because it won't pull maybe two coaches with plastic wheels on it. It's, it's ridiculous. All that being said, let's get into some of those detail. Now, what I do like about it, and I'll show you this in just a second, um, is the handrail goes all the way down and you can tell that it's like separately fitted and put through these little you know attachment rod thing with bobs um, but it goes all the way around stops turns and goes up and over and then back down the other side so it's all one piece 
I, I don't I don't know why I like that one so much, but it, I've never seen it before on any other of the other ones. And I really think this is from Hornby's Heyday. If you can't see the shadow, I did air quotes there. Um, and it's, you know, just, I don't know, I guess it's better quality, but I don't know, it's just weird. Now, if you look real hard, you can see the line where the boiler comes together. I'm not going to show you that because you'd have to look really hard and we'd be there for five or six minutes. Um, and I ain't got no time for that. So, yeah. Um, but if you looked really hard, you could see it on there. If you listen real close, you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it. But I got big ears. One of these days we'll do a face-to-face -face and you'll be able to see all that stuff. Um, but for now, we won't. So... Going in here, and we'll go into a little bit more detail in just a minute, but these rivetings around the smoke box are really nice. The lines around the boiler are painted. Um, they're a little broader than other ones, say like the Tornado or the Duke of Gloucester or whatever, um, but the, uh, they're okay, they're okay. You got the nameplate here. Um, the builders, what I assume is the builders plate below it, and nowadays, Hornby will actually put things you can read on there. Like, they'll put an actual builder's plate on there, just in tiny, tiny scale. Um, and 90% of the time, it's legible. This one, as far as I can tell, and I've got pretty good eyes, it has a whole bunch of Jack Nana on it. Um, I'll reflect that on there using that. And see, it's got a whole bunch of nothing. It's just a mirror. So, yeah, it could have been done better, but it is older than me, so whatever. Um, again, LNER, the LNER paint job is flawless. You can see all this back shadowing and all this red around it. Um, I'll zoom in on that in just a minute and let you see it. So yeah, all that's done pretty well. Um, the safety valves here, I'm pretty sure they're safety valves, are separately fitted. And I think they're metal. Don't quote me on that, but I think they are. The whistle separately fitted, but I'm pretty sure it's plastic, but it's painted the same as the uh, safety valve, so it looks okay. And then um, all this valve gear is really cool, especially when it's moving. It's really cool. It's pretty unique. Um, I don't have any other locomotives with this on it, and I've got a few now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, you can see the steam, or the piston box here has got that white lining around it. The wheels are green. Um, now the modern ones have a white lining around the end of the wheels. But again, this one's kind of old, so I'm not really knocking it that hard. Um, it does have separately fitted, and you can see my pointer go behind that, separately fitted handrails on the tender. Crazy thing is, this one and its twin on the other side are the only ones that are separately fitted, and you know, you can go behind them. This one down here is not this one right here is not. I uh, I don't know how much money they saved there. I, I don't know. But apparently it was enough to make it worth it. So whatever. And then this front window is glazed. You can see how I'm not going through it. This back window is totes not. Totes not. Um, it does have a front little window that's glazed. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so yeah. Um, it does not have sprung buffers. Let me get my hands of God in here. Yeah, no sprung buffers or on the tender no sprung buffers but that's okay um, yeah I usually do a little bit more detailing on my locals but I don't think I'm gonna do any on this one another thing that kind of irks me see this line here see how there's no line over here I no little line out but there's lines over here I don't understand why would you do that to one but not the other? I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. But since we're back here, I'll go ahead and move you around so you can see. Yeah, let me pull that off there for you. So you can see the back here. I'll just hold it. You can see the back here. It's got that separately fitted handlebar too. I can go through it, um, yeah. So I'm gonna take this tender off here because we got some cool details to look at in the cab. Um, 
You know what? While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get this steam going so you can see the steam coming out of it. Anyway, back to the tender. So the tender load is okay. It's old. You can tell it's old. I don't know if it comes off. I don't think it does, but whatever. Um, you've got where I suppose the water would go into. Um, again, I've never even seen any of my locomotives in real life, so I don't, I don't really know. The trucks down at the bottom are okay. They're not great. They're just plastic molded on, but they're okay. Again, there's that piece that you can go behind, and again, the no go behind. But you can see how the light refracts that L and E R. And even though it's 20 some odd years old, it doesn't even look touched besides that one smudge right there that just came off my finger. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still in pretty good condition. Now, if I can get the light to get on there, you can see how it's got cold coming out. It's got a brake rod. It's got some, you know, just a little detail in there. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy, but it's still pretty good. If you go out and buy one of these and say you buy it for a kid, or your child, or your niece, your nephew, your cousin, your uncle's cousin's brother, sister's daughter, I don't know. Be aware, this is a copper rod connecting to a copper piece on the tin or on the engine. It does spark. Let me say that again. It does spark. So you gotta be wary of that. If you've got uh, grass or dead fake stuff on the side of your track, I guess maybe you could catch fire. I don't know. I have wooden grass all around my track, um, except for this one portion. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And the place that this normally sits and then the place that it normally sparks is by some new grass that I just put down. Uh, I only spoke earlier when I said it's all around my track. It was all around my track, it's not now. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind if you do get this for a child or something, okay? Now, let's bring in that engine. You can see we've got a little bit of steam coming out. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, let me go ahead and turn that down so it's not burning off all that oil. Um, but yeah, it's okay. It's not great. I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see it better. Um, and you can see I've got Bill and Ben in there. I don't know why I call them Bill and Ben. I just always have. Somebody put these in for me and they put Bill up on a piece there. If you watch this and you did that, why? I don't understand you. Why? Let me know. Um, just real quick on this other side. Same exact mirror image. Same thing. All right. The front, I'll show you that handrail that goes over. It's great. I love that piece. I love it. Um, there's no painting on the on the smoke box door, but hey, it's old. We'll forgive it. Um, if you did notice that there is some um, oil coming out of the smoke box, it does that. I think my reservoir has a crack in it. And Lord knows this thing's too old for me to buy a new one and put it on there. However, I will say that this one has the best, um, or the easiest, rather, tender engine connection. I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit so you can see it. All right, so let's go ahead and do some slow speed. That's forward. Um, let's go ahead and do some real slow speed, see how it works. Maybe. It is a ring field motor, you gotta remember that. Um, but it, it works pretty well. That's about as slow as she'll go. Especially if she's pointing anything, she won't go any slower than that. And then I'll bring her back into the frame for you. I'll slow her down for you so you can see. She had just kind of squeaks and then it'll just barely shut her into life there. Yeah, but other than that, it's okay. Um, you guys know what's coming up. We're gonna go into blackout. I'm gonna pull down my back sheet. We're gonna go around the track. I'm gonna warn you, my track's a little rough right now. Don't be all judgy judgy. I don't judge yous, you don't judge me. There are some new parts to the track. Let me know if you see them in the comments below. Um, 
other than that, let's go blackout and I will be right back and we will go right into that running test. Okay, ready, hold your breath and go. And breathe. Wasn't that long. Breathe. It's fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. You're fine. Okay. So let's do this. Um, and again, before we start this, I'm sorry that I don't have a better camera. I am kind of just starting out. So don't judge me. We'll get to a better camera one of these days. So you see, it is pretty quiet once you get it rolling. I mean, again, it is one of my favorites. And if it gets stuck, I'll be so mad. It usually doesn't. Sorry, make a finger. It usually doesn't, but sometimes. It's good. We're good. Everything is good. Of course. Of course. Well, guys, that seems like a pretty good place to stop it there. My dude is falling down. You can see him right, right there. He fell over. I don't know where that one came from. One of my kids probably brought it in here and put it in here. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it did jump the track. It usually doesn't do that. It probably hit something. I'm not going to fix it on camera for you because this video is getting a little long. But hey, again, I'm not going to ask you to like it. I'm not going to ask you to, to, to subscribe. My life goes on either way. But hey, if you liked it, give me a like. If you really want to see more and hear my gorgeous, lovely voice, um subscribe if not my life goes on anyway guys it's been fun and i will see you in the next video